Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to look at what separates pro Fortnite players from everyone else. I've read and seen a ton of comments from people wondering why they're not able to take their gameplay to the next level. They'll say something like, I'm a way better builder than this pro, or I could easily beat this pro player in a 1v1. How is he signed to this team? Now, while some of that may be true, there's obviously a reason most of us are not pros. A big reason could be that you may not play as long as them, but I personally know many top tier pros that really don't play the game as much as you would think. I'm talking 2-3 to three hours a day at most, unless of course there's a tournament. So if that's the case, what's the real difference between your average Joe and your average pro? To help you guys understand, I'm going to use clips and examples from well-known pros as well as some underrated pros you may not have heard of. With that being said, let's start with the first thing that separates all of us from the pros, your reflexes and reaction time. If you haven't heard of the word reaction time before, you can think of your reaction time in Fortnite as how long it takes for you to respond to something in game. The most basic example would be your opponent shooting at you. Players with fast reaction times would instantly whip out a wall to protect themselves, while someone with a slower reaction time would probably get hit before they had time to build the wall. The pro that made me notice how big of a difference reaction speed made was Clarity G. Clarity is a two-time World Cup qualifier and a part of Booga's trio. Just from watching his gameplay right now, the speed at which he builds to protect himself or play offensively is insane. It's not even about building up fast, it's more about how fast his reactions and reflexes are as he builds. Watch in this clip how quickly he builds this ramp and then makes the edit to secure the kill. He gives his opponent no time to think, breathe, or get a shot off. Another good example is the small build fight he gets into. Like I said before, he does play and build fast, but it's not so much about how quickly he builds, it's more about how fast he decides mentally what to build and then how fast they come out in order to block damage or make a play. He reads every edit his opponent makes and has such ridiculous reflexes that he's actually able to turn the situation around in his favor. So how does he do it? Well, if you noticed, a lot of it is clarity anticipating and predicting what his opponent will do. Reaction times and reaction speeds are really hard to improve on their own. However, bad reaction times are usually a symptom of not being aware of your environment. Of course, a new player will not expect someone to edit on top of them, because they barely know how editing works in the first place. On the other hand, a pro player like Clarity, who has been in that situation hundreds if not thousands of times, he knows all the different edits his opponent can make. He'll prepare for each one, and then once he sees his opponent make a play, he quickly reacts and counteracts it. My advice to improve your reaction time is just to get used to and learn to anticipate your opponent's moves. The best way to do that is to go into public matches or arena and W key everyone you see. You want to get into as many fights as you can so you'll start to see and learn what plays to expect. That way you'll react quicker and slowly improve your reaction time. The next difference between pros and everyone else is their ability to outsmart and outplay their opponents at any time. This is kind of similar to reaction speeds, but what I'm talking about is how easily pros can pull out 200 IQ tricks to win fights. I just made a video on this topic, so make sure you go check that out, but just like I talked about then, the king of 200 IQ outplays is Mr. Savage. His streams are basically highlight reels because of how often he's able to outclass whoever he faces. Savage can make outplays with his builds, edits, snipers, shotguns, grenades, shockwaves, really just whatever he has available to him. When you compare Savage to an average player, he's able to see and make plays they would never imagine making or thinking. Even I get blown away sometimes by some of the plays he goes for. Now, the main way to improve outplaying people is really just to know everything about the game. That means you need a ton of game sense by either playing a lot yourself or watching streamers and YouTubers. You also want to have your mechanics down, specifically editing. A majority of the outplays you'll see from Savage involve throwing his opponents off guard with quick and confusing edits. All in all, you have to realize that outplays are called outplays for a reason. They're not easy to pull off. But if you practice your mechanics, game sense, and watch my video to understand the process behind outplays, you shouldn't have a problem starting to make some of your own. 
The third thing that separates pro players from the rest of us is what I call the it or clutch factor. This is their ability to clutch up and win fights that not many players in the world can. The player that fits this build the best to me is Booga. Booga is able to consistently win 1v1s, 1v2s, and even 1v3s against other top tier pros. The clip you're watching right now is a 1v3 by Booga against the best trio from OCE that actually just placed first in the fourth week of the championship series for trios. An average player or even an above average sweat like me would be extremely nervous and choke during intense situations with money on the line. Booga however is unfazed when he's put in these situations and steps up nearly every time he's given the opportunity to. Unfortunately, out of all the attributes I'll cover in this video, your clutch factor is by far the hardest to improve upon. Reason being is some people are just naturally stone cold killers like Booga, while most others would be shaking and pooping their pants if they had been put in the same position as Booga in the World Cup. My advice for getting that clutch factor is to put yourself in those nerve wracking situations as often as you can. The more often you play tournament games or wagers for money, the easier normal arena matches or 1v1s will seem. This is pretty much the reason Booga is never nervous. You gotta realize the man won the World Cup. He's so experienced and confident in his own abilities that there's nothing that could ever make him sweat or choke. The more experience you have under your belt, the more confident you'll be to win the game and the more likely you'll be to clutch up and come out on top. The fourth major difference between a pro and your average sweat or bot is their aim. If you've been watching Mongrel recently, then this is more apparent than ever. His aim in these trio tournaments has been nothing short of aimbot like. And even though everyone loves to make jokes about controller players for their aim assist, Mongrel's aim is so good, he makes L2 spamming look bad. Aim is arguably the most important aspect of your Fortnite gameplay, especially in higher level games and tournaments. Even your average sweat with no game sense can crank 90s pretty fast. But there's no average Joe out there that can laser people like pro players can. This is a huge reason you see Mongrel and his trio consistently do well in tournaments. They get an absurd amount of elimination points by beaming people out of the sky on rotations, which, again, would not be possible without their insane aim. The way Mongrel and most other pros improve their aim is by using Kovac's aim trainer. As good as a lot of the creative aim trainers I've showcased in the past are, Kovacs is still the best. The most common drills you'll see pros do are ascended tracking, tile frenzy, bounce 180, close long strafes, and fortnite gliders. I'll probably release an updated Kovacs routine that aim training coaches recommend, but in reality, any of the highly rated Kovacs drills will help improve your aim. My other big tip is to lower your ADS and or your overall X and Y sense. Mongrel and other pros with insane aim like Tifu and Frosty ZK all play on extremely low sensitivities. Technically, you can still have good aim on high sense, but there's a reason the top performers at the World Cup all played on low sense. Go out and pair that with some Kovacs practice or creative aim trainers if you're on controller and you will quickly start seeing improvement in your aim. The fifth and final thing that pros do better than an average player is play and do well consistently. One of the most underrated and consistent pros in Fortnite is CLG Som, who many of you have probably never heard of. Som actually came second at the Fortnite World Cup in solos, only behind Booga. Som is what I like to call a meta master because he's always the first person to adapt to the meta. You might remember Som from this clip of him destroying people at the Winter Royale Finals. Or this clip of Som using a mech late game and having his teammates build for him into zone. That's the kind of player Som is and why season after season he's always at the top and always winning. Som succeeds on playing smart, using his brain and relying on making good decisions rather than his mechanics. He's one of the main reasons I stress the importance of game sense. The easiest way to improve your game sense is not even to play Fortnite, it's actually to watch and to analyze it. Playing Fortnite will definitely help you improve your mechanics, but for decision making, if you're constantly making the wrong decisions, it's actually bad practice and will make you worse. Practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So, you need to learn how to make the right decisions first by VOD reviews and watching streamers, then put it to use in real games. 
overall, those are the five biggest differences between a pro and everyone else. Hopefully, I helped those of you looking to take your gameplay to the next level and convinced those of you self-proclaimed, underrated, and goaded console gods that you still have a lot to learn. So, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. I was curious what kind of videos you guys would like to see from me in the future, so just leave a comment down below to give me some more ideas. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.